All right, beautiful people. Today we're going to be talking about the coming DeFi summer, what it is, and how y'all can get prepared for it so you don't miss out on anything. Also, spoiler alert, it may have actually already begun, so pay close attention. Let's get into it. So DeFi summer is pretty much like alt season, uh, where you know altcoins are literally going to the moon, doing crazy numbers day after day, but instead it's for DeFi-related altcoins, and refers not only to the price of the altcoins uh, in general, but also to the value locked within each of these altcoins' uh, smart contracts, as well as the high yields that some of these uh, you know yield farms are actually giving. And this is going to be kind of where we take a look at our first thing, which is going to be uh, DeFi Pulse. So if you take a look here, DeFi Pulse is pretty much just a website that gives you an idea of what the DeFi market is looking like currently. Uh, they have a, a really, really good chart over here that tells you total value locked uh, in dollars. And this is kind of a metric that a lot of uh, projects look at, especially just to show how many people are actually using it. And mind you, total value locked, all that means is how much money worth of crypto is locked into these smart contracts. Locked just means that it's put into it. Like you can take it out any, any day, theoretically. So I think the term locked is a little weird. But nonetheless, uh, DeFi summer happened uh, last little last summer and it was really the start of decentralized finance in general, which I think is something a lot of people don't realize is that DeFi hasn't been around that long. It literally started like more or less last summer. Uh, you know, at least really started getting momentum last summer. So if you take a look, about June 8th of last year, uh, we had about a $1 billion locked up in DeFi. Uh, and, you know, this, of course, could have been in any of the main ones, maybe Aave, uh, you know, maybe, maybe some Uniswap pools, whatever. Uh, but now, if you take a look and, you know, kind of just seeing how the past summer went, it really just kind of started taking off. And by the end of September, right around the end of September, hit it right around almost $11 billion uh, in total value locked about an 11x uh, since the beginning. And this is kind of when everything DeFi related started booming, really. Uh, you know, and that again, that includes, you know, what's it called? Uh, not only value locked, but the prices of some of these tokens as well. You can see some of the main players in this case, Aave, Maker, Curve, Compound, and, I, and Uniswap. And, you know, I would say this list probably looked similar back then as well. Uh, Polygon is probably the only new one in this case. But taking a look back at where we are now, you can see that we actually hit a high of about right around 88 billion, if I can get, yeah, 88 billion, uh, right in about May 11. So, I mean, well, right, right, right around a month ago. And right now we're kind of coming back up from this huge dip that literally just happened, <laughs> as obviously a lot of you guys know about. So I would definitely consider the fact that DeFi summer has actually already started, especially because of their Polygon POS chain. And mind you, we dipped to 50 million, 50 billion, I mean, and we're kind of back up to 66 billion. So that's kind of, I, I feel like a low key started on that, on that little, little, like a dip, that spike. But nonetheless, I mentioned the Polygon POS chain and that, you know, I think that that's kind of where DeFi summer started. You know, I've made a couple of videos about me yield farming in the past, literally just like a couple of days ago. Uh, and Polygon has pretty much been the number one place to do it. You know, all the projects are moving there because of how low the fees are and how fast the transactions are. And even now, if you pick the right farms, you can literally get away with like really, really high yields and, you know, more or less a crap ton of money, not financial advice. Um, especially if you're using some of the more risky farms, um, but even ones like Beefy Finance that I've been talking about quite a bit. Uh, I mean, they have one farm, Titan, hint, hint. Uh, that one has been doing crazy for me personally. Uh, but again, this isn't really me just trying to show you stuff. This is me kind of just trying to explain what's going on. Uh, but believe it or not, I do believe that we have yet to see the height of DeFi summer. I mean, obviously, the summer hasn't even started yet, technically. I think it starts on the, on the 20th of June. But I do think it has started. Um, I think that we're very, very far away from the height. You know, very little people know about DeFi. So I'm going to come at you guys with a couple of tips and a little bit of info that you guys are going to really, really find valuable uh, these coming next months, because I'm telling you, it's probably going to be crazy. All right. So number one, practice using dApps. Uh, and this, this, of course, means using decentralized apps on Polygon or Ethereum. Now, I know it sounds kind of like I guess cliche like practice makes perfect, but it, it is kind of true. And that, that, that's not, that doesn't only hold true just for like just knowing how to get in and out of contracts, but it also makes you comfortable with, you know, like the prices that you want to spend on getting in and out of contracts. If you're on Ethereum for Polygon, you know, seeing how risky you can actually go without kind of losing your mind, being able to track your own portfolio, getting used to it. It's a lot of things that you want to get used to. And the last thing you want to do is wait for a really, really good opportunity to come out on one of these uh, chains like Polygon or Ethereum or whatever, 
Uh, and then all of a sudden, like, you're, you're just starting now to get used to DeFi, you know, how some of this yield farming works, how impermanent loss works, all that stuff. You want to get used to that stuff now before the hype comes. You want to already be more or less, you want to be seasoned, all right? You want to have that adobo sprinkled, sprinkled on you, all right? You don't want to be like a plain piece of chicken <laughs> when all this stuff comes out. Nonetheless, um, kind of a part of that is also knowing, uh, giving yourself an amount that, that you're okay with, like, I would say having like two bags. This is personally what I do is having like a bag that you're okay with going ape on in terms of like, you don't mind losing that bag of, you know, God, you know, God forbid. Uh, but at the same time, like you don't mind getting into riskier stuff for higher returns. You feel me? Uh, and then of course you're going to have another bag just to be safer with, you know, probably more money. Uh, but of course, because you have more money in that one, you don't want to, you don't want to start throwing that into everything. Maybe you only throw like your higher valued bag into more reputable projects like Uniswap, uh, Ave, Compound, whatever it is. Uh, but I think it's okay. I think it's good to have at least two bags just so you can get experience with one of them, which is going to be the bag you're, you're going ape with and the safer one, which you're okay with just literally just getting yield consistently off of, you know, and again, that could be with stable coins, Ethereum, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. Number two, reevaluate your current portfolio. Uh, and by this, I really mean kind of getting the dust out. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I have a lot of altcoins and I kind of look, look back at them the other day and I'm like, you know, like I, I don't even know why I have a couple of them. Um, and nonetheless, I have had some of them kind of staking and stuff like that. So what I went ahead and did was some of them that I'm not, that I'm like, okay, I mean, am I really going to be, am I really bullish on this long term? Maybe not as much as I am on it for Ethereum or for some of the DeFi coins or tokens. So what I did was I sold some of the altcoins that I current so that I currently have. Uh, not a lot of them, uh, but like I think like maybe one or two, and I kind of just converted them all to ETH uh, because to me, uh, especially with DeFi summer coming, in my opinion, again this is all me, this is all me, in my opinion, and I think a lot of people are thinking the same, is that. Um, you want to put your altcoins to work, your, your tokens to work, and you, you kind of just want to get integrated with the space. Like, I don't know about you guys, but the past couple of weeks uh, has been pretty nuts, especially again if you've been using Polygon and yield farming. Uh, it's it kind of opened your kind of kind of opened your eyes, and it's like, yo, like why do why am I holding some of these other tokens if they're not even doing anything for me? And obviously, the, the whole point is that maybe they're gaining in value in the long term if you believe in the project, which I get. But I really mean when I say reevaluate your portfolio is just get the dust out, get the stuff that you don't even know why you're holding it, reevaluate it, make sure you know why you're holding certain tokens. And if you don't know why you're holding them, just take them out and buy some Ethereum. Right? <laughs> you're, you're gonna need it if you're gonna be yield farming. Uh, number three, have capital ready to use whenever a new vault or app comes out. And this is very important, uh, or at least having a strategy is very important. Uh, because you know something that happens obviously a lot in this space is new opportunities. In this case, new vaults and apps. And sometimes, I kid you not, like especially on the, on the Polygon network, um, like there were some pools coming out with literally like, I think it was like millions or billions of uh, a percent ter percent returns uh, APY, <laughs> uh, which which equated to around like three to four percent returns a day on whatever you provided liquidity for, which is a lot of money. And that's something you probably want to get into, uh, assuming that the base tokens are legitimate. Uh, so. That's something that I always recommend having, just having some money on the side at the very least so that you can get into some of those uh, vaults or apps when they come out so you're not missing out on any of that stuff. But at the same time, uh, if you don't have any money on the side, you should also have maybe like maybe that ape bag that you have, and this is what I've been doing, that ape bag, you know, the, the one that you don't mind losing a little bit of money on, uh, that's probably gonna be generating a good amount of money for you uh, day to day. So literally, what I've been doing is taking the returns out from that bag and putting them into new opportunities, you know? Um, more of the riskier ones, obviously, but nonetheless, still putting them into new opportunities so I can get more and more yield off of it. So again, just kind of being ready, you know, after, you, after you've practiced using all those different de uh, decentralized applications and stuff like that, once a new one comes out, you should be seasoned already. You'll be able to go, put some money into it, and you'll be good. Number four, number four, uh, Twitter. Twitter. Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. Twitter is so important. Um, I think most of you guys already have a Twitter, but you really need to have one. You like If you're going to get involved in DeFi, if you're going to get involved really in crypto in general, you have to have a Twitter, bro. Literally everything is announced on Twitter. Whenever a new project is coming out, it's announced on Twitter. Whenever uh, an update to a chain or a project or whatever is coming out, it's announced on Twitter. Um, as well as some of those low-key opportunities, you know, there are a lot of different people talking about different things on Twitter, um, and following the right people is very imperative. I... Obviously, I'm on Twitter. I'm probably going to show my account later on, too, as well. But if you want to give me a follow, I also follow a couple of other people, and I retweet. I talk about what other people are talking about, uh, just so whoever's following me gets all the information that I'm getting. 
like pretty much whatever I do is announced on Twitter. Uh, so this isn't really telling you to follow me, but if you don't have a Twitter, make a Twitter and follow some of the biggest heads in the space, follow these huge projects. And trust me, uh, over time, you'll start following the correct people and you'll, you'll be able to filter out who's full of shit and who isn't. <laughs> but nonetheless, that's where everything is announced. So be on Twitter, 100%. And lastly, this is going to be the info, the insider info that we got. Not really. Everyone kind of knows. A good amount of people know about this already, but just in case you guys don't, um, Arbitrum. Arbitrum is going to be the key this summer. Uh, that's what I think. So if you guys aren't familiar, Polygon obviously is a POS chain. It's a side chain, not really a layer two. Uh, the main difference is it's more security related. Like side chains use validators to validate their own blockchain. Layer two solutions inherit their security from Ethereum. So Polygon or side chains, they have their own security. Layer twos use that security from Ethereum. They use their own, you know, hash rate. So Arbitrum. Now there's a lot of details about Arbitrum that um, was actually released on the video with Bankless that they had. A uh, great video, you should check it out. I'll see if I can link it up above or whatever. Um, but nonetheless, Arbitrum is gonna be the key because of all that they have to offer. Now obviously it's a layer two, uh, but the thing is that almost every app on Ethereum is building on Arbitrum. That's Uniswap, Compound Maker. I mean, I don't know if those specifically ones are doing that. I think Compound and Maker, I'm not sure about them. I know Uniswap is. Uh, but they said that they had about two to 300 different projects, like literally wanting to build on Arbitrum and that are building on Arbitrum right now. So once this comes out, and mind you, they plan on releasing it, uh, releasing Arbitrum obviously to the public when most of the projects are done so that when once people are onboarded, like once we are able to get access to Arbitrum, it'll be, you, you can use everything pretty much. So Arbitrum is almost going to be like a playland for DeFi. <laughs> I think they keep on referring to it as like a, uh, as like a, uh, as like a playland. It's like a, like a park, a theme park or something like that. But almost every app is going to be on Arbitrum. Uh, a lot of them will have liquidity mining opportunities. Very important. Very, very important. That's why Polygon right now is so lucrative because uh, pretty much as far as I'm concerned, a lot of these teams and Polygon themselves are providing incentives are like literally throwing money at people for actually yield farming. Like if you see on Aave, you'll see that there's a, that there's a lot higher returns um, in Matic and in, in their own native token. Uh, so liquidity mining opportunities are plen are going to be available on our Arbitrum. They haven't announced which projects will be doing them yet, uh, but they, they will still be there. And of course, the fees will be in Ether on Arbitrum, uh, not you know anything else because Arbitrum doesn't have their own token. I know that's something a lot of people are asking. They don't have their own token. I don't think they're planning on making their own token. Uh, so the number one asset for Arbitrum is going to be ETH. <laughs> so what that means is if you don't have any ETH, that's, you're probably going to want to hold some. Uh, and part of the reason why I say that is because it's not going to be as cheap as Polygon either. I think they mentioned something about optimistic rollups uh, because of the way that they work or because of the way that Arbitrum does it. They do, they're not as cheap as Polygon. Um, it's still a lot cheaper than the main chain on Ethereum. And even the main chain on Ethereum is pretty cheap now. Uh, but it's not as cheap as Polygon. Polygon is like literally like less than a cent. <laughs> I would assume that, uh, what do you call it? Arbitrum is going to be a little more expensive, but it's still going to be hundred percent usable as far as I'm concerned. So ETH is going to be a little important in terms of holding it. Uh, and not only that, cause if you think about it, if Arbitrum does become enormous, which I, I honestly think it will be, I think it's probably going to be bigger than Polygon. Then there's going to be a lot of people holding ETH. And what that means is there's going to be a lot of people wanting to hold ETH. So all this stuff kind of boils down to like, <laughs> this is gonna this is gonna be what I'm really doing uh, stacking as much eth uh, as you possibly can at least that's what I'm doing I'm trying to get as much eth as possible right now uh, trying to accumulate other DeFi tokens like uni uh, ones that track the market as a whole like that ASCII token I mentioned a while ago I have a couple I have some of those uh, maybe even some of the DeFi pulse token they, they literally have their own token I think it's like DPI uh, that tracks the you know most of the entire market uh, but the point is that this summer is looking crazy so I kind of just want to make sure that everyone is positioned in a, well, everyone who watches my videos at least, uh, is positioned in a way that they're comfortable once everything comes out, like y'all are ready to go. Like y'all are ready to start throwing money at stuff safely, <laughs> safely, um, and kind of just do, do y'all thing. Obviously do your own research and stuff like that. And kind of on a side note, I've been farming on the Ethereum mainnet a lot more recently uh, because of how cheap the gas fees are on there. Uh, I also recommend getting on Twitter. Uh, obviously, you guys can give me a follow if you want to stay up to date on what I'm doing. But anyways, guys, let me know down below. Uh, are you guys going to be getting ready for a DeFi summer? Uh, do you even care about it? Let me know. I really want to know. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope these tips helped. And uh, yeah, I'll catch y'all later, all right? Peace out.